traveling through Shady Cove on our way to a stop off on the Rogue River. This is called the Rogue Gorge. Our favorite thing about these little pullovers is they're so scenic and informative. Now we're on our way to Crater Lake National Park. Deep water in a sleeping volcano, Crater Lake inspires awe. Native Americans witnessed its formation 7,700 years ago when a violent eruption triggered the collapse of a tall peak. Scientists marvel at its purity. Fed by rain and snow, it's the deepest lake in the USA and one of the most pristine on Earth. Artists, photographers, and sightseers gaze in wonder at its blue water and stunning setting atop the Cascade Mountain Range. Source NPS.gov. Thank you to Stephen Mather, who laid the foundation for the National Park Service. The weather was beautiful and cool on this day in August. Oftentimes the park is covered in snow all the way through June or July. We made time to take the paid trolley tour, which is narrated and very worthwhile to learn history of the park. Up here are also impacted or also impact our fires. So on Alrighty, so that porous layer of rock, it's on our north side, it's called the Palisades, and water will flow out of that. If it didn't, if that rock wasn't there, that extra 50 inches of water every year would eventually accumulate, and our lake could overflow. That water would eventually find the lowest point on our caldera rim and would start flowing out of our lake. And like I said before, water and ice is very good at cutting through rock. We might eventually get one of those V-shaped valleys that are deep enough to drain the entirety of Crater Lake. And like I said, those glaciers might be the only reason that Crater Lake exists. 
it is because that porous layer of rock is glacial till. That area was deposited sediment as glaciers were moving down our mountain. If those glaciers were never there, our lake could have drained by now. I do have an example. So he wrote thousands of letters trying to make this place a national park. He convinced half the people. The other half um, were worried that maybe if they protected this land, it would damage some of the industries in the area, like logging and mining. Um, so he switched from telling people how cool this place is to how worthless it is, how worthless the logging is, how worthless the mining would be. And eventually this place became protected in the national park system. So he had an affinity for naming things in sort of weird ways, including Wizard Island and the Devil's Backbone. He named those features in our park. When you're the founder, I suppose you can name whatever you'd like, but he thought if he named them in a fun way that it would bring people to the park. They'd want to come see the island named Wizard Island. In his description of why he named it Wizard Island, all he said was he named it for its odd appearance. Most people believe that that's because it's the shape of a wizard's hat, but I guess we will never know. You could come up with your own explanation. But in another good idea at the time, he wanted to bring more people in. He wanted a tourist attraction. So William Steele, along with other of the parks, some other of the uh, park's founders, stocked our lake with fish in the late 1800s, early 1900s. So the fish that we have in the lake, he originally stocked six species. There are only two left, one of which is rainbow trout, the other is kokanee salmon. You can fish in our lake without a fishing license because they are non-native. So you can take as many fish as you'd like there's no size requirement at all. The only thing that we ask is that you use artificial baits, so we do not introduce anything into our lake that shouldn't be there. That is also one of the reasons why we only allow those five boats on our lake. We don't allow watercrafts like kayaks and paddle boards, because if they have been a different body of water, they could produce or introduce algae and, um, and bacteria from other bodies of water into our lake, which is not something we want. We're going to these crayfish, um, potentially electroshock, potentially some kind of chemical, um, but they, there is no way. This is our weather buoy. It's oh. pretty new. We got a new one about three years ago or so. You can just see it out in the middle of our lake. Can you see it? Yeah, that's good. It's just this tiny there. little dot in the middle of our lake. You saw it? So if you go to the edge of Wizard Island and then go down, it's going to be a little more to the right, in the middle of the lake. It's going to be a dark stick. You found it? Okay, good. Yeah, so this weather buoy is pretty new. It measures a lot, and it is attached to the deepest part of our lake. So what you're looking at right there, you can find the weather buoy. You can see the deepest part of our lake. The weather buoy measures... Um, air temperature, wind speed, humidity, as well as uh, water temperature. And it, it has sensors that go all the way down to the bottom. So we know that Crater Lake, past the first 100 feet, is almost exactly 39 degrees for the entirety of Crater Lake. The top 100 feet does warm up with the season and cool down with the winter. So in the winter time, the very surface might be close to 34 degrees. Right now, a start, our surface level, especially the top six inches, might be closer to around 60 or 65 degrees. Um, still pretty cold to go swimming, but definitely worth it. The weather buoy has a cousin, though, that I'd like to talk about. Is anybody familiar with the old man of the lake? Anybody? Good, then I get to talk about it. So I'll see if I can find a picture of him. The old man of the lake. Stand up. Okay. The old man of the lake is an old log, a tree log, a tree stump. Tree stump. It is 40 feet tall, um, but only three or four feet of it sticks out of the water. 
If you find him today, I will give you a prize, because I haven't seen him lately. But he travels around wherever he wants to go. Our lake is 21 square miles of surface water. It's also 21 miles in circumference. Um, so it's a pretty big lake. He has been in our lake for at least 125 years. Ever since this park was discovered, since it was founded, they have record, written record of this log being in our lake. We have pictures. We have no idea how long he was in our lake before we spotted him first. Um, so he could have been in our lake for 250 years. We never, we will never know. Um, we do know that when he fell into the lake, this tree was around 400 or 450 years old. And I think that he has <laughs> sort of an attitude, a mind of his own, definitely personality to the old man. Um, he's a little bit nosy. There are a couple of stories I like to tell. So the old man is going to look just like that buoy. It just won't be right in the center of the deepest part of our lake. They look very, very similar. The old man, when that buoy was replaced out of anywhere in the lake he could have been, he was right there at the deepest part of our lake checking it out. He might have been saying goodbye to his old friend, the old buoy, but he also might have been making sure we were doing our jobs right. Um, when we started boat tours up after COVID, he was right there at the end, at the bottom of Cleetwood Cove, waving us on, <laughs> or maybe judging us, I don't know. <laughs> so my favorite story involves the deep rover. This is a submarine that went to the bottom of Crater Lake. In the, in the 1980s, we had a submarine expedition get to the bottom of Crater Lake. They explored around 2% of the, sur or the floor of our lake. They discovered a lot of things that they didn't know before, um, one of which is hydrothermal vents. Um, these hydrothermal vents are only about 60 degrees. They're not super hot, but it is evidence that there is still magma underneath the surface of our water. That, that means that our, um, our volcano is dormant, not extinct. They also found bacterial mats near those hydrothermal vents, and our scientist went to the very deepest part of Crater Lake in this submarine, and he said that he could still see the outline of this flag at the very bottom, which means sunlight reaches to the very depths of Crater Lake, which is very, very cool. But when they were doing this expedition, they knew that the old man was kind of nosy. He might get in the way. So they tied him up behind a boat and dragged him over to Wizard Island, and they, they docked him there. And for days, all we had was thunderstorms and lightning and dark skies. <laughs> they were all stuck on Wizard Island. They couldn't do any of their research. As soon as they let the old man go, we had clear skies. Uh -huh. So he very well might be the spirit of Crater Lake, making sure that everything's all good.